over the last couple of weeks, Mr. Serral has been absolutely destroying the competition once again. I'm in particular impressed by his Zerg versus Terran. So, on the channel, I casted him going up against guys like Maru, Byun, Cure, the very best Terran players from South Korea. And he makes them look like they aren't even really that good at the game. Now, this time around, in this particular Best of Five series, his opponent can be found a little closer to home. Joined by the little panda bear right there, that's not a panda bear, the little polar bear on the main command center from France and playing for Team Liquid, we're looking inside of the main base of Clem. Now I think Clem is one of the very few Terran players that Serral is a little bit concerned about. Generally speaking, Clem when it comes to playing an online tournament, especially on his home server, he is one of the absolute best players in all of StarCraft 2. Generally, players do play a little bit worse at offline events, especially when you're playing on like a big stage or players like, for example, Clem also do play a little bit worse when they have to play cross server. So say, for example, Clem would have to go up against somebody from Korea. They would probably play on one of the North American servers. So the ping is equally bad for both players. And Clem really does look a little bit weaker in those circumstances. But this is peak Clem. Clem really doesn't get much better than playing from the comfort of his own home, playing on the European server. It's just that he's going up against Serral, and Serral has been looking nearly unstoppable lately. Obviously, he's been very good for a long time, but I am genuinely very impressed. So, if I had to be uh, a betting man, I would definitely be putting my money on Serral in a match like this. But Clem is certainly somebody you cannot just write off. This guy has got phenomenal Terran versus Zerk. Incredibly fast player. Probably the fastest player when it comes to playing Terran at the very least in all of StarCraft. But in general, if you ever have the privilege to watching some of these guys play live, highly recommend having a look at, well, for example, guys like Clem, also guys like Serral. I mean, I always highlight Clem's speed and Raynor's speed and all that, but it's not to say that Serral is a slow player whatsoever. It's just that I guess they're a little bit more theatrical on the keyboard. For some reason, it looks a lot more impressive, even in the earlier stage of the game. Now, obviously, high APM does not necessarily mean high skill, but most of the, well, actually, all of the high-level players in StarCraft 2 do have high APM as well, although there are, some, of course, extremes. The vast majority of the players will be playing at least at, like, 300 average actions per minute, but these players, Serral and Clem, they can easily go north of, like, 5, maybe even 600 when needed which is ridiculously fast. That's literally 10 buttons a second. <laughs> Let that sink in for a little bit. These guys are very, very quick on the keyboard. Now, obviously, generally what the StarCraft pros do is they, they change the repeat delays and the repeat rates of their keyboards quite a bit. So say, for example, you're a Zerg player and you want to make Zerglings really quickly. What you can do is have all of your hatcheries on one hotkey and then click the hotkey and hold down the button to make a lot of those Zerklings all at once. And if you have the repeat rate and the repeat delay set up in such a way, uh, it will basically create like 50 sets of Zerklings in like a quarter of a second. It's incredibly fast. So that does of course inflate the uh, APM quite a bit and you can't really, you know, you can't really consider every single one of those sets of Zerklings that gets made. You can't really consider that all uh, an individual action because it doesn't make a lot of sense. They're just holding it on the button. But anyways, Long story short, these guys are good at the game. Now, one thing I've noticed Serral do over the last couple of weeks is a very funky build that only he seems to be playing. It's that extract a trick 15 hatch opener into a quick lair, skipping the Zerkling speed upgrade and then going straight into the Roach Warren. I can't tell if this build is actually good or if this is just something that Terran players don't have a lot of practice against and therefore they you know, don't really know exactly what the go-to should be, but it certainly is a very interesting style. In the meantime, though, Clem is also opening up in a pretty uncommon way here with the triple barracks start. Now, one big advantage, and this is what I've been thinking about lately, of going for such a quick lair. So this is a lair at like the three minute mark. So you obviously delay the Zerkling speed and you may not even get it in this game at all. You do get your Overseer out really quickly. And one thing that Serral is very good at is scouting and interpreting exactly what needs to be done against the uh, different varieties of Terran openers. So this very much so strikes me as a I don't want to die to anything dumb opener. And I guess he's run the numbers and he's figured out, yeah, I can't really lose the early game if I play a build like this. At the very least, I haven't really seen that happen. Maybe this is the threat, though. I mean, there's a lot more roaches coming. Roach speed is just about to finish up as well. 
This is a scary amount of Marines, and yeah, Stimpak and Combat Shields are done. I was gonna say, this really does seem like a bit of a sniper build, but I believe I said that as well in that series that Serral played against Bjorn, when Bjorn went for a very similar, if not identical, opener. Uh, it looks scary, because it's a lot of Marines, and the trades here are not bad for the Terran whatsoever, but now suddenly Terran's gonna have to sit back for a while, right? We do have indeed that starport done right now, but there's no there's no medevex out just yet. And on the back of this, Serral can start droning up. And I think this is exactly why he likes playing this build. Just trying to be as annoying as possible with these roaches right now, but really just trying to stabilize. I guess the mindset from a lot of Zerg players is that they really don't want to play late game. So a lot of Zerg players right now, even at the highest level, they seem to want to play the mid game primarily because in the late game, Terran is absolutely lethal. And maybe the difference is that nobody really wants to play against Serral in the late game either. So suddenly that mindset almost shifts where the Terrans are trying to win the game before it goes the distance. I'm not exactly sure. I'm just, you know, thinking out loud here, but... I'm, I am getting that vibe, you know, because most Zerg players are the ones trying to be aggressive to prevent this sort of game from going the distance, but Serral very specifically is going for builds that, well, do allow him to take the game to go the distance. Anyways, a lot of roaches here just hitting at the front, and this is an awful lot of stuff right here for the Zerg player. He's going into tunneling claws together with the roach burrow upgrade as well. Not just the roach burrow. It's the burrow upgrade for every single Zerg unit. Zerg units don't uh, discriminate. It's just, uh, yeah, some units can burrow without the upgrade somehow, some way. The roaches can't, however. A little bit funny, actually. But anyways, Bunker goes down over here at the third base, and Clem has successfully now secured the low ground expansion. He decides to make the transition towards siege tanks, which I like quite a bit. Obviously, these tanks are started up quite late, but... Yeah, this is not a bad situation here for Clem whatsoever. His early game didn't really work out all too well, but obviously the Zerg slowed itself down quite a bit, and... In the end, the Terran economy here is still very, very solid. Now, this is where that speed can really be showcased. This is where these players can really show what they're capable of. The multitasking right now is really going to start picking up, because there will be a lot of potential here for drop play all over the map. Serral just going for a drop alert as well. Apparently, we're going to try and drop a couple roaches, eventually, into the main base of the Terran. In the meantime, the Medivacs are a little bit faster in that department. They're already unloading over here, and these are very exposed Evo chambers. Okay. This is definitely something that Clem has noted at this point, because he must realize that this may very well be something that he can get some value out of. Roaches right now have arrived, yep, inside of the main base of the Terran, and they're gonna start putting in a little bit of work. Link Speed is now going to finish up, so eventually I guess we will have that transition away from this Roach Ravager based army, but it is interesting to see how we eventually got here, right? So look at this style, man. It's like, it's like Serral has been studying the Bly replays from 2018 or something. Like, <laughs> these games are just... <laughs> I really am not sure what to make of it, but he wins every match, so I, I guess it's good. It just doesn't seem that good to me, but that's because I get... Like, it doesn't really seem like Serral. I guess that's my main, my main, uh, you know, concern here. It's not even really a concern. That's my main thing that I note here. Serral has been perfecting this Lingbane army over the years, and he's incredibly good at it, but now I've rarely seen him play it over the last few weeks. And he's winning every single TVZ, not even really playing the strategy that, yeah, I think is probably the best playstyle. It's just that nobody plays this, this Road Ravager based army very frequently. So I think a lot of Terran players, like I said earlier, just aren't exactly sure how to transition against it. And I feel like this is one of those builds, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in a couple of months from now, but I feel like this is one of those builds that is only going to be good for a little while. Like, for example, like that two base Muta opener that we, see, we used to see all the time. I, I feel like this really isn't that great overall, but, well, clearly, Serral is making it work. Anyhow, 4th Command Center fires up right now. It is relatively late. The drops are once again ready to go in, though. That's a lot of Medivex. All right, five Medivex full of units right here for Klim. Serral once again doing the slowest of roach drops over here. <laughs> Maybe you took offense, you know, when people said you're too predictable. He's like, you know what? I am gonna go. I'm gonna become the madman. This is a killer drop, though. The entire Zerk army, effectively, is on the other side of the map, and this is not enough. 
Denying these upgrades would be absolutely amazing. I think Clem could have had that target fired down. In the meantime, though, Roaches are going to town over here. Fight over in the middle of the map as well with some massive fungal growths. Excellent control right there, but why are we need targeting the, the Evo chamber? Hello. We should really be targeting the Evos. But anyways, he decides to go after the workers instead. Maybe he'll still be able to turn around and get those upgrades sniped. Roaches just pivot so much on those upgrades. Lovely drop here, though, by Clem. That seemed very YOLO to me. I think if he wouldn't have taken that fungal growth to the face, I would have really loved it. Now he comes back, snipes the infestation pit, snipes one evo chamber. Alright, apparently this one gets to live for now. It is gonna finish up the plus two carapace upgrade at the very least. Obviously, Clem doesn't know exactly when that one is gonna finish up. But that was a lovely drop right there for Clem. And this makes the game a little bit awkward. Yeah, the entire main base, as well as the natural expansion, has been destroyed. Now we have a new lair already done, so Sarah apparently anticipating that decision there by the Terran, but it does mean that he will not be able to get his Lurker upgrades here anytime soon. And Lurkers without upgrades really aren't particularly great. In the meantime, Clem is securing his fourth. Okay, let's go Clem. Lovely stuff. There's still a lot of Zerk economy here as far as the bases go, but he doesn't have a lot of drones. So he's only got 49 workers here. He's desperately trying to make a couple of Lurkers, but these Lurkers, yeah, they really can't be used offensively. The problem with the Lurkers right now is that, well, they just burrow too slowly. They don't have enough range. I think you can put them in a position and try to get some value out of them, but it's mostly just locations on creep where they can be really used effectively. Clem now securing this high ground as well. Maybe even pretending like he's going for the base over here, but that's really not what he's doing. He hasn't added on another command center yet. No, instead we're gonna go into the mass production right now together with the Ghost Academy. So, Clem is preparing himself to play that late game army, but he hasn't quite had the command center explosion yet. Will we decide to jump this? He realizes that the opponent does not have the Lurker upgrades. Yeah, without the Lurker upgrades, these units just seem so pathetic and weak. He does need to do a second scan right there as well. A couple additional lurkers coming up. Roach counterattack in the meantime, though, over here in the natural expansion of the Terran. This could actually hurt quite a bit. Does Clem decide to go home? He does not. A lot of roaches following this game up right now as well. 12 and a half minutes into the game. Usually not the unit you want to play anymore, but Cyril is getting a lot of value out of it. Trying to get as much chaos here as possible. In the meantime, those low range lurkers, though, are trying their very best to just push this all back. Couple roaches coming around the side. Can we get a couple of biles as well to connect here? I think that's what he's looking for, and Cyril is looking like he's going to clean this up. Again, a very expensive set of units to lose, but in the meantime, he's done so much economical damage on the other side of the map. Now suddenly, the Terran's economy has also been reduced to just the shell of what it used to be. Hmm. The one thing I really like here for Terran is the upgrades. The fact that he's got the plus three plus three coming in all of this, or with all of this going on, is really nice. Because I actually don't think he necessarily needs ghosts. Not until the lurkers come out in bigger numbers and until they get all the upgrades, but you need to be at Hive Tech before you can get those upgrades going. So for now, I think it's A-OK -okay here for the Zerk player to, or sorry, for the Terran player to just stick around on Marines and Marauders. He is mixing in a couple ghosts here. Obviously, he doesn't know exactly how many Lurkers there's going to be. Decides to pop as many of those Overlord balloons as possible. A couple of the units over here get cleaned up. Lurker drop in the main base. This little drop alert, I think it's deserved Nematized Carapace. I think it would have been nice to have, yeah, a little bit of speed on that Overlord a little while ago, but apparently that's not going to happen. The Lurkers, however, are a distraction in the main base, and they now allow the Zerg player to move forward. Cero pushed to his absolute limit here, though. I don't know if he's got enough. I don't think so. Nope. Okay, so Clem has got four base eco, 60 workers. I liked it a lot. These last few minutes by Cyril have been good, but they have also been pretty desperate. He needs to get more done than what he's got done so far, and Clem is starting to make that transition towards a proper late game army. Now with 3-3 done and kicked in, I think this is a game where Clem can definitely obtain the victory. Yep. Brenda over here, caught way off creep. Small group of marines and marauders, as well as one ghost. Gotta go after that hatchery, and the Zerk army, I mean, it needs to be split up. Is there even enough with plus three? These units do a lot of damage, the hatchery goes down, Medivac boost away. He's still harassing over here as well. Picking up the pace right now. 
Love to see it. GG gets cool. Zero realizes that there's no way he's gonna be able to obtain the victory. And what seemed like a very dangerous decision to boost like five Metavex full of units inside of the opponent's main base turned out to be a brilliant strategic choice. Clem ends up obtaining the victory in game number one. Dragon Scales is gonna be game number two in this best of five series. Clem decides to open up with the double barracks start. I've mostly seen the Korean Terran players play this lately, but I know Clem has been mixing it in quite a bit as well. I don't know if it's any good against that double hatchery start that seryl has been playing, so once again it's gonna be a 15 supply hatch over here on the low ground into a nice and early spawning pool as well. That means that those queens can come out about 10, 12 seconds earlier, depending on your execution. And that of course means that those first couple reapers won't really get a whole lot done. I found that this build is in particular very good if Zerk is opening up with the super quick third hatchery. So that's always an option of course, but yeah, we'll have to see. <sighs> Ooh. Two minutes and what, 15 seconds on that Roach Warren? Sarah going for a cheeky little Roach Rush? Okay. We'll I have to see how that works out. Because obviously those Reapers can slow down the attack quite a bit. Maybe he's concerned about the third barracks though. I think that's actually what it is. He sees the command center right now. Yeah, 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 okay. So there have been a couple of triple Rex openers as well, where you look, you, you make it look as the Terran player, like it's just a regular triple Reaper start. So you go for the, you know, double barracks over here inside of the natural, and then you have like, you know, another one of those barracks hiding over here to the right side, for example, of your main base. Tricky for the Zerg player to deal with, and I guess if you don't have your link speed going early, it's kind of difficult to deal with that. So maybe that's why Sarah decided to go for the Roach Warrant. I thought it was going to be for cheese, but I think it was actually just for base defense. Anyhow. Upon seeing the command center, because he didn't see it over here. Clem, uh... Yeah, it's no longer going up against the Zork player, who's got a very quick Roach Horn going. So, he now goes into a very quick third CC. I like this start, though, here for Clem. Right? Because his third command center is going to be done by the time that Serral... Well, maybe not done, but it's going to be quite far along. Probably the best way to describe it. By the time that Serral is going to start taking a third hatchery. And I'm inclined to imagine that that is pretty darn good for the Terran, right? Because those mules, they do mine a whole lot of resources. We'll have to see if the other top-level Zergs also decide to start playing this build at some point in the future. Okay, no, not gonna happen. The queen almost died, though. Hey, there we go. <laughs> this Reaper apparently was tasked with one task only. Sorry, buddy. It was a one-way trip, but you know what? I agree, sacrificing one more Reaper to finish off the Queen, I think it's fine. If it was two Reapers for a Queen in the first place, probably not okay, but when you've already lost one and you know she's low HP, you may as well, because those Reapers, they do fall off as the game goes on. Alrighty, so, third hatchery about halfway done. Third command center, growing a little orbital command hat on top of itself. Now we're gonna go into the Metavec production, so no shenanigans right here on the back of this from Klim. That's, I feel like, where some of the strength of this double uh, barracks opener really is. The follow-ups are, yeah, you have a lot of different varieties. I've seen the Benchy follow-ups, Liberators, even Battle Cruisers after the Triple Reaper. This is, I guess, the most conventional version. And I think the reason why Clem decides to go for this follow-up is because he knows that his opponent's lair timing was really early, and therefore this, over uh, this Overseer scout was basically inevitable, so Sarah would have scouted any sort of cheeky planetary play, or any sort of cheeky, uh, not planetary, sorry, battlecruiser play, or cloak benchy, or double factor, or well, whatever, right? Like, you have so many different options available as a deterrent player. So Sarah decides to, yeah, scout out early here what's going on, and it turns out Clem is playing the most stock standard follow-up that you can go for. Double energy base. Combat shields coming up as well. Yeah, the third command center, it's nice. But you do, of course, fall behind in workers here for a little while as Terran. So, yeah, for a little bit there, Zerk does get the eco advantage. And I think he will have it as well for a little while longer. But now that the third command center is going to be able to start, well, pumping out SCVs as well, Terran should be able to catch up in that department pretty yeah, pretty quickly and probably even pull slightly ahead. 
Once again, there's tunneling claws. Plus one, plus one. Overlord speed this time around, okay. Together with Burrow as well. If you're a Zerg player though, and you're struggling out there, in this particular matchup, while I'm not convinced that this is the best build to play at the highest level of StarCraft 2, this does seem like a strategy that is 10 times easier to execute than that early, the early game, like triple hatchery into Ling Bane based army, because there's so many things that can go wrong. With this early game scout as well with the Overseer and yeah, the fact that you can't really get cheese very easily, I actually really do like this opener, I think. Maybe I should, uh, I, I coach a bunch of StarCraft people, right? A, a bunch of Zerg players out there. I wonder if this is a build that I should be uh, teaching to some other people too, because this really does seem like a excellent, I don't want to die to anything stupid build. In general, a lot of Zerg players enjoy playing Ling Bane, I found, but Ling Bane is definitely much harder to play than just the good old Roach Ravager. Anyways, Marines finding a queen. Pick up, get on out of there. Drones decided to run around for a little bit as well. The only problem here is that it doesn't really lead towards any big attack right here from Zero. He's just basically playing a defensive game until, well, I guess he can go for a little bit of Roach Harass, but it doesn't really lead to a timing attack. Lovely little missile turret over here. I really like that missile turret timing. It's really important that, yeah, these tunneled clawed roaches are not going to be able to get too much value in. Couple of roaches in the main base, once again dropped here. Push over here at the front as well, Siege Tank, okay, in a pretty stellar position. Yeah, gonna be difficult for the Zerg to really get on top of it. This tunneled Roach is not gonna be able to get a lot of value in either, and this is already a lot better here for Clem. Yeah. This may be one of the first times, there you go, that Clem is playing against this build from Serral. You can see that he's adjusting, compared to game number one. He's already made a couple of changes. And this seems like a much better position. Obviously, he ended up winning game number one. So, we'll have to see how this game number two is gonna go. One Roach over here being a nuisance. But it will also get cleaned up. Yep. Alrighty. So. Worker count is now essentially dead even. Whenever Clem is gonna be mining a bunch of uh, those mules. They're coming out of disguise right now. He should be pulling ahead when it comes to the income advantage. There's the plus two started up, and second factory, okay. Nice and early. Not a bad idea though, against this particular Zerg force. Uh, link speed is done, but we are committed right here to getting plus two, plus two. Ravagers getting targeted, okay. Investors once again come in. Link speed here into the plus two missile though, does mean that he does not really want to transition towards like a Link Bane based army. Maybe eventually, but not anytime soon. I think instead what we're gonna do is go into a Hive and then a Lurker Den as well in just a moment. The Lurker Den does have a Hydro Den requirement, so we'll probably see it fired up here in just a couple of seconds. Drop in the main base once again though. Not five Metavex this time around, just the four. But not bad whatsoever. Okay. We're gonna reposition a couple of these units. I will have to see when Clem decides to go for a move out. Yeah, I don't think he should wait until he's fully maxed. I actually think pushing right now might be the right call. Big fungal growth over here. But is there any follow-up? Not really, so it doesn't matter that much. Here come the roaches once again, though. These roaches have been waiting off to the side, right? The entire time. They've just been sitting there, waiting until Terran is ready to go for a move-out. Serral sniffs out that indeed there is going to be a move-out right here from the Terran. And immediately... Okay, he decides to tunnel the roaches in, and this is buying a lot of time. Ultimately, what Serral's looking for here is that Lurker tech once again. So if he can buy any sort of time, that would be amazing for him. He is maxed out right now, yes. Lurker then is coming up. Hive is done. And that little roach tunnel by here, I mean, it is clearly buying a ton of, a ton of time here, right? Like, this is making it difficult for the Terran to properly commit right here to an attack at the front. Guess what? The clock is ticking. Lurker then is done. Marines coming in off the side here as well. Okay. Yeah, I think I like the early game in this game better for Clem than in the previous one, but I like the mid game here so far a little bit better for Serral, despite the fact that I think he found himself in a slightly worse position. Loads of SCVs are falling, man. These Roach Tunnel buys. <laughs> 
It's so funny because there is detection, there are missile turrets, and there's a bunch of siege tanks sh set up, and Sarah's like, nah, I'll still continue going here, regardless. These roaches are all just sitting there waiting. I mean, there is a missile turret coming up in this mineral line too, so at the very least, eventually, you should be able to find it. But really, this is just here to buy time, right? Like, he's he's killed a ton of SCVs, that's great and all. He built, uh, killed a bunch of siege tanks too, very nice. But ultimately, these roaches, they're just a stepping stone to go towards that Ling... Uh, well, maybe Ling Bane eventually too, but I mean Hydra Lurker-based army instead. There they go. Okay. Planetary Fortress is finishing up here at the 6 o'clock position. That's the fourth base of Clem, so that means he can start thinking. Six Dropper Lords. He can start thinking about the Ghost Academy. That's exactly what he does. Uh, six Dropper Lords. What are we gonna do with the six Dropper Lords? What will we do with the six Dropper Lords? Are we, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna Lurker Drop him? Are we gonna Road Drop him? Are we gonna... What are we gonna drop? Are we just gonna drop everything? I don't think you can fit everything inside of these balloons here, but this is gonna be... a lot of additional mobility. Now look here that the right side of this Terran base is very susceptible. There's one Viking patrolling. Okay, it's just a full lurker drop. This Viking is really nice though. It's gonna give him a bunch of time and at least a little bit here of a moment to prepare. The empty... Empty overlords really should be leading this charge. I think Sarah is still gonna fly through this though. Push over here in the meantime. Fungal growth. Lovely. Yep. Okay. The lurker got dropped off and apparently we're now moving over here. He does have the adaptive talents done right now as this drop comes in. Lovely timing. Don't know if this push is that great to be honest from the Zerk, but still. It's creating so much chaos now for the roaches and the ravagers and all the other units here to start laying down the law. The entire Zerk army, uh, or sorry, the entire Terran army is distracted here by a relatively small chunk of the Zerk. That's 16 SCVs going down. Brilliant game right there by Sero. Royal Blood is gonna be game number three. Now this is a triple Rex opener here from Clem. Just like what I was describing in the previous game. But the barracks is not hiding inside of the main. Generally, this barracks would be built right around over here or so, or close to this little, you know, jump down ledge. Putting it in the middle of the map may actually make it very difficult for Serral to figure out what he's playing against. We'll have to see. Does he once again go into the blind roach warren here? Because that's what he did in the previous game. Obviously, in the previous game though, Serral decided to put down a Roach Warren right now. Not anticipating a command center to be built inside of the main base of the Terran. So there's a chance that Serral's gonna skip the Roach Warren now because of that previous game. Because he didn't need it then, because this opener looked identical to what Clem has scouted so far, or to what Serral has scouted so far, rather. Yeah, he's not put down a Roach Warren. <sighs> Lovely stuff. Okay, now he needs he needs something. Yeah, now the Roach Warren goes down, but it's like a half minute later than what we saw in the previous game. Really liking this decision making here for Clem. So making that decision in the previous game because of this strategy that he wants to play in this game. He could have built that command center, that, that first one he built in the previous game on location in the natural, but he decided not to. Specifically because of this follow up right now and this should now deal a lot more damage. Okay, lovely control here though. One queen has gone down here. Two reapers. A lot of them are in the red hit points here, but they should be all right. Roach Warren is going to finish up. We're going to go for a second gas geyser before fully saturating the first one. Okay, maybe Sarah wants to transition into an all-in off of this. He's sneaking out a few Zorklings towards the right side here. We'll have to see what he decides to do with that. But yeah, these Reapers are insanely potent. These Roaches should have been out already. Zerkling's now coming back home. Maybe a bit of an old army hotkey there as well by Serral. Really cool stuff here by Clem. Yeah. So to clarify, I think I already clarified it, but just to reiterate, I guess. The roaches are out right now, so I think this is mostly done. But in the previous game, Clem decided to go for a double barracks opener, three reapers. And he did not build the command center right over here on location. When Serral saw this with his scouting overlord, he instantly dropped a Roach Warren. 
However, he cancelled the Roach Warren when he saw that at the time the command center, the second one, was built right next to the first. Which was a little bit odd, I don't think I really talked about it in the previous game, but it was a bit strange. Normally you would always be building it behind the safety of the wall on location there. So now, upon seeing the exact same strategy here in game number 3, Cyril decided to not drop down the Roach Warren blindly when he didn't see a command center in the natural. And now he did have to deal with a triple Rex opener. Cute little mind game. And in the end, a very valuable early game right here for uh, for Mr. Clem. He's gone for concussive shelled marauders here on the back of this. Interesting. So he's anticipating this push here from Saro. Yep. He saw the timing of the second gas in the main base, I guess. So that must have given him an indicator that something was not entirely right. He's gonna have to defend this big Zerk attack right now, though. Only 28 drones versus 31 SCVs. This is not a third CC on the back, it is either. And I think these Concussive Shelt Marauders are gonna be lethal, no? Should be really good. Okay, a couple of Biles immediately do land. One Marauder goes down. But that's already a handful of Roaches going down, too. Still, though, yeah. This is an army that needs to be respected. These Zerg units do not mess around. SCVs and mules are pulled away from the mineral line to try and repair. Mules want to try and see if they can get one more return trip there of their minerals, because they are, of course, very valuable. Okay, we're going to reposition a couple of these structures. And there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The Banshee here is going to finish up momentarily. No Zerg unit here available that shoots up, but still, of course, these Roaches can peck a punch. Now the SCVs are starting to fall as well, if I'm not mistaken. And this may still turn out to be a pretty good start right here for Serral. Although he's probably going to lose the majority of his army. He's reinforcing this with slow Zerklings as well. Roach is just tanking so much damage. And despite the fact that their natural enemy, the Marauder here, is, well, available. The numbers here are just in favor of the Zerg. Splitting up the units as well to try and make that Banshee waste as much time as possible. Clem has not been able to really produce another Banshee here. And in the end, yeah, Sarah ends up dealing a ton of damage here with this attack. Still, it is important to not overestimate the advantage right now for the Zerg. Yes, I like his position quite a bit better, but this was very committed. He doesn't have a lot of drones on the back of this. And I think the crisis management from Clem has been really strong, all things considered as well. Okay, so Lair is gonna be done here in just a moment for the Zerg. He's only at 28 drones and he's still making more roaches. He could have been droning here for a while already. I think this might be a night display or something like that, because this overlord is this overlord has got a look on his face, man. His eyes, his many eyes are telling me he's he's a crazy one. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So I think we're gonna bring the queens and the roaches to watch the other side of the map. So what started off as a cheese by Clem has turned into a cheese by Serral and is gonna be a follow-up cheese from Serral as well. I would love to see continued uh, Benchy production. I don't think that would be a bad idea, but very soon there's going to be a Zerg infestation inside of the main base of the Terran player. Is he going to be able to hold it? Okay. There's the Nidus Worm. Clem does not have vision of it, although he sends a Marine over here. He's That's huge. That Marine right here right now is massive. We can start repositioning the army. Hello. Okay, that was a little slow for some reason. Yeah, we decide to pull workers. I guess he did not anticipate that there would be a worm here, but he was checking for it. Siege tank gets into position. It should have been there already. That factory should have been re-rallied to the other side. No queens popping out just yet, but there's Brenda. Brenda ready to lay down the law. More SCVs are gonna go down here. A lot of damage here done by the Zerg, but not enough yet. Not enough yet to actually justify this. Now Clemdo is starting to really drop when it comes to the worker count. Third command center is about three quarters of the way done, but I don't know if he's ever going to be able to finish it here. The Benshi here turns out to be such a critical weapon. Okay, Brenda and Karen working right there together on that command center. I think what they should be working on though is probably that Benshi. Nice little bit of sniping here. Good control by Clem. Just picking off whatever unit decides to leave the safety of the creep behind. 
Widowmine also burrowing in this location. Instantly vile dough. <laughs> and we're gonna try and get these units out, but Clem gets the body plug done, and that means that not every single one of these Ravagers manages to slip away. All right, instantly rebuilding or restarting, I guess, the construction of that third command center. In the end, big picture, a lot more losses on the side of Zerg. Serral has been sitting on a slightly superior economy, I suppose, now, but this really isn't a lot of money. This really isn't a lot of income. Could have been a lot better, man. If, if Clem actually re that tank right away and had re-rallied that factory to the back, I think he would have been able to get a lot more value out of his siege tanks. Sadly for him, he did not react quite as fast as he could have. He had all the tools there, he had all the vision, but I guess he didn't anticipate it. He just, you know, on autopilot, decided to send a marine towards the corner of the main, because it looked kind of dark on the minimap. Alright, this hero Benshi though, 24 confirmed kills. Alright, well, here comes the queen. She's gonna lay down a creep tumor here. Serral's still just continuing the aggression. We're mostly just walking the units across here. That's a dead Ravager, once again. We have a siege tank over here. Medivac coming up as well. Stimpak is done, which is gonna be really sweet. And maybe more importantly, actually, the third orbital command. Yeah, three mules are basically as much economy as the Zerg has in total right now. So as long as he gets himself, the Benshi, by the way, gets repaired. As long as he gets himself a stable position, right? And he doesn't lose literally everything. I think Clem is gonna be all right. That Benshi is just forcing the Zork to make a move, right? Like, that Benshi here has been an absolute legend. Okay, now finally is when we decide to pull the Stimpak button. Serral realizes that he doesn't have enough stuff, and it's Clem who obtains the victory. Ancient Cistern. Match point right here for Clem. All right. Normal opener here by the Frenchman. Barracks into a command center on the low ground. He's gonna play a straight-up game on what is likely going to be Serral's map pick. Let's see, where is this gonna go? Okay, Serral also now mixing it up a little bit. Not actually going for the road opener this time around, but he wanted to go for a quick third hatchery. Now, he did get the hatchery down here eventually at the triangle position, right? So, at least he's gonna be able to continue macroing here, but apparently both of the guys here have now, uh... Yeah, buried the hatchet, and now we're gonna just do a normal game? Is that what we're doing? It's like, okay, buddy. It's been fun, we've been playing around for a while, you cheesed me, I cheesed you. You did the roach stuff, I did the mass medevac drop. What about we now play a normal macro game? You know what? I don't mind it. Well, normal macro game. It is gonna be a third command center here on the back of this, but this is a second barracks before the starport. So, Glenn definitely is looking to uh, get a lot of units going, and maybe he's thinking as well about potential aggression here from Serral still. The problem is, of course, that he doesn't have perfect vision of the Zerg's main base, and generally speaking, with an opener like this, Clem will be able to finish up Stimpak at a reasonable time. Like, say this would be a Roach push at, like, the five-minute mark or so. He should be able to, uh, yeah, get his Stimpak done right around the same time as the Zerg player would hit him in the face. Now, this is considered quite a good macro map. Hellions now coming on the back of this too. Maybe it's not like a Gresven, right? Like, Gresven is where we basically see a macro game every single time. But Ancient Cistern definitely does seem like a map where Zerks can win the game a little bit more comfortably when it does go the distance. Especially if you compare it to, like, for example, a Neo Humanity or a Gresven. Okay. I actually kind of want to look up the win-loss ratio at the pro level for this particular map. Let me have a quick look. Ancient Cistern Liquipedia. Um, so, Liquipedia keeps track of all of the pro games that are played on these maps. Yeah, so for the Terran versus Zerg matchup, Terran has a win rate on this map of 46.9%. Meaning that Zerg, I mean, that's usually what the percentages look like in this game. Uh, meaning that the Zerg does have a slight advantage on a map like this. I think the main reason for that is that Terran can't really force the split map as easily compared to like those other two maps that I just mentioned. On Neo and on uh, Gresfin, you can just, well force the map to be a, uh, a split map pretty easily as Terran, but not over here. Those corner bases are kind of tricky. That center base, kind of exposed. Okay. 
So there's the Baneliness, together with a lair. I almost feel bad for fast-forwarding now through the first two minutes of the game, because we actually haven't seen a match like this from Saro in a while. But we have seen... On the channel, I must have uploaded at least a thousand videos where the Zerg players go for this build, so I'm assuming everybody is well familiar, but... Right now, it seems to not be as common for some reason. Alright, now all of the roads do generally... In a normal macro, ba uh, macro game, quote-unquote normal anyways, to watch that Ling Bane based army. At least that's what Sarah is going for here. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Clem is going for that Marine-based force instead. He's gonna be supplementing the Marines with Medivex, together with Siege Tanks as well. Starting up the double upgrades. Sarah rushing out to the Baneling Speed upgrade as well. That one's gonna finish up here in a little while. And now we're gonna go into the double evolution chambers on the back of this too. Okay. It's funny how seeing a normal game of TVZ now gets me very excited. I'm like, yes, guys! <laughs> Normally, this is what I would expect from every single TVZ, and what I did expect from Saro up until, like, a few weeks ago, but... Okay. Plus one armor, plus one melee. Boom! Armor upgrade. A lot nicer for Zerg in general compared to the Terran. Mostly to do with the siege tank splash damage, but also the way it mitigates some of the marine damage output. Okay. Yeah, there is enough Zerg army though. Yeah. Those queens are putting in a lot of work. A couple of Hellions here together with that Reaper from the earlier stages of this game, trying to get something done. We have a change thing here as well, pretending to be a marine. So Sarah's gonna be able to get some nice scouting here. Second factory coming up. And we should probably see the 4th Command Center fired up shortly. So, in the previous games, we didn't really see a 4th Command Center until well after the 10 minute mark. That definitely was a little bit late. Um, I'm assuming Liquid Clem is gonna be taking it a little bit sooner here this time around. Armory, maybe a few seconds late. But not the end of the world. As long as we can go into 2-2 reasonably early, it is all good here for the Terran. Alright, this is that drop play, right? This map has got a lot of good siege tank positions. Uh, this can hurt. Yeah, Zerg has to clean this up. This is, of course, against 1-1, one, one, or at least soon to be 1-1 one, one Terran. Zerg does not have any of those Evo Chamber upgrades done just yet, so this is one of those pushes that can be quite painful. Are we gonna collapse on top of this? I think we're gonna need to, no? Can't really afford to lose the hatchery, Serral. Okay, he decides to pull the trigger at the absolute latest possible moment! Turns out to be a perfect, yeah, a perfect engagement. I mean, he lost quite a bit more than he was hoping for, I suppose, but the hatchery lives and the army has been pushed away. Siege tanks also got cleaned up, but this is not quite... No, this is not quite over yet. Widowmine as well, joining in. We're actually making a transition right now from siege tank production into that Widowmine play. So since this is a Ling Bane-based army, now that Clem has got full confirmation of that, he decides to play the Widowmine style instead. There's already a backup hatchery here at the 6 o'clock position, but we're only sitting at 75. There's the 4th command center about halfway done. We're only sitting at 75 drones here for the Zerg, so... This is not a economy that Sero can just... ...sustain Ling Bane indefinitely with. You're really looking for like 85-ish workers before he can start flooding the map properly. And Clem is really trying to prevent the Zerg here from getting that done. Widowmine. Okay, it's gonna get a really lovely detonation. A couple of Banelings also do get some work done. Metavax do have to retreat, though, from the top section of the map. Plus two melee. Plus two armor. Don't forget about it, Serral. Hive is going to finish up. There it is. Uh, Hive is going to finish up. Drilling Claws has just been fired up, and we're gonna go into additional barracks production. Fourth command center can fly on over towards that nine o'clock or three o'clock rather position, and he should be able to start getting the ghost going here pretty soon as well. Not exactly sure what Sarah has gotten the hive for this early. Is it just going to be for vipers, just for adrenal glands? Okay. As far as I know, yeah, we do not actually have an infestation pit, or or we don't have an infestation pit. Sorry, we don't have a lurker den or hydro den or anything along those lines. Ultra's technically an option here, but realistically probably not a good choice against somebody of Clem's caliber. Okay, Clem pushing in every single area of the map, trying his very best. Every single opening at the very least on the map. A Viper is coming up. 
There's one more Widow Mine. Okay, that one actually betrayed the Terran army as much as it helped it. Cheeky little Widow Mine drop. Ready in the, the corner over here for its queue to fly in. Zerg thinking about the counterattack, but Planetary's done. Yep. Lovely stuff here. Lovely stuff here overall by Clem. He's gonna go for the additional tech labs over here. Ghost Academy is not done yet, interestingly enough. I think he's gonna try and fire up some ghosts here in, in a second and realize he doesn't have it, but that doesn't really matter. What am I drop over here, getting a bit of damage done. What am I drop over here, trying his very best. All things considered though, in the midst of all this chaos, Serral is doing a phenomenal job. <laughs> Cleaning all of that up. <laughs> nice pick up as well though. Okay. Don't know where that medevac is going, but I'll let that one slide because there's a lot of stuff to manage here. So this is basically pure Ling Bane with a Viper for support. Don't know if I love it. I don't I, I don't love it, no. I guess ghosts at the very least aren't gonna be a problem. Now those banelings over there were quite nice. Okay. Parasitic bomb as well, trying to get some value in. Liberator production has been started. Yeah, there's... Hmm. This is an army that's not bad. Like, it's it's not gonna really, like, be easy for the Terran to overwhelm this. But it's also not an army that really is gonna create a lot more value as the game goes on, you know? Like, the, the one for the Zork that is. So Ling Bane is fantastic here for now. But we don't really have a transition coming either. Yeah, so I guess there's a Hydra Den right now, so I think he's probably gonna just go into the Hydra Den, so full-on Hydraling Bane for now. Maybe with Lurkers eventually. It's just the Terran tech-wise here in this game is definitely a hit. What am I? It's getting some really nice detonations in. Good split as well on that Medivac there by the French Terran. Picks up, tries to get on out of there. I think Burrow would be a nice upgrade to have here, actually. Trying to go for uh, some of those Burrow landmines. At the same time, speaking of Burrow, there's not a Widow Mine. Getting a couple Zorklings as well, behind that Queen. Alright. Now, does Clem start up the Commensator explosion here anytime soon? He's got the 5th CC landed here. There's another Commensator now done. He's not really doing that style that... Cure and Maru and Bjorn are playing in the late game here. At least not yet. He's not rushing out a dozen command centers and making a million orbitals and then just scanning over and over and over again to keep track of exactly where the Zerk is located. Instead, he's investing a lot more money into this harassment, right? Because he loses units, but he can also replace them pretty easily. Okay. A lot of these units are running dangerously low on hit points, though. Yeah, I was going to say, these traits are starting to slip out of the Terran's control a little bit. It's important not to get too carried away. Night is warm, coming up here once again. It's been a successful thing so far in this series. May as well. At this point though, the Zerk is sitting at 88 drones. And that is what I was trying to bring up earlier. I think 88 drones is a lot more comfortable than 70 something. Because now you can actually just flood the map with Zerklings. Terran's economy here though is fantastic. And one, one troublesome base that Terran usually has a difficult time acquiring is that one in the center. Look at that. The reinforcements have already been rallied on over there. There's a uh, sensor tower set up every area as well where Clem needs to scout it. This is going phenomenally right here for Clem. I really like this for him. Yeah. He's got map control, right? Against a much faster Zerg army. And that really shouldn't be the case here. Cero is constantly trying to deal with fires, right? And he's, he's, you know, taking out the fires and he's trying his best. But he's not really gaining an advantage here. Those Widow Mine connections are really, really dangerous. Alright, so there's the Lurker then, by the way, researching the upgrades. And we're gonna go into that Lurker army. Slowest Lurker transition I've seen in a while, though. Generally, these Lurkers would be coming up a little bit before this point. Resources lost wise, look at that. 6,000 more minerals lost right here by the Zerg player compared to the Terran, but of course, he's been mining a bunch as well. That must have been the moment where Clem decided to drop a round of mules or something like that. Anyways, Fusion Core coming right up. Additional command centers coming up. Another starport on the production tab.
Building armor, high sec auto tracking. Those are the things of a rich Terran player, okay? Lovely splits here. Clem is so fast on picking out the right medevac that gets parabombed. It's really easy to mess that up. Big reinforcing army over here. Gonna try and get some value in. Probably should have scanned ahead of that so we could actually get rid of some of the creep. Okay, Marines forced to run away. Trying to back off to the safety of the planetary fortress. Fight over here in the bottom right -hand corner is also still continuing as Terran does stabilize in this area of the map. This hatchery now gets spotted and it does feel a little bit dangerous, right? I don't think that's the best one to mine right here for Serral. He's trying to secure the one over here as well on the left side though, but that one also is not going to be an easy one to obtain. A whole round of Widow Mines just sitting there waiting to get a hit in. Okay. Beautiful splits. Lovely splits right there by Serral. He did that really fast. Okay, that's gonna be a command center down the drain, but we're now at the point where Clem can replace lost command centers pretty easily. He's morphing in a planetary fortress over here. This is one of those key locations where a lot of traffic will generally happen later on into the game, so I don't mind seeing it. Anticipating, apparently, that this game is gonna go on for quite a bit longer. Advanced ballistics coming up. Liberator range, that is. And now we're starting up the Liberator production too. So this is not a Ghost Mech transition, instead it's like a Ghost Liberator Bio transition. So he's gonna, yeah, be a far more mobile Terran player compared to what we see from the Koreans usually. It's a powerful unit comp. With a Mines, once again, getting some really nice detonations in. Putting in so much work. EMPs as well, okay, not really getting any value out of those Vipers that time around. Planetary Fortress with the one additional range now too. Putting in some work, getting seven kills. Clem once again on the prowl. Serral though does still have a lot of money in the bank. He's got an Infestor waiting here as well. Does need a little bit more energy before it can go for the Fungal Growth. Okay, counterattack here from the Zerg player as well, thinking about moving forward, but guess what? There's a planetary in that location. I like that planetary there, actually. It feels kind of random, but it's a difficult area to push into right now for the Zerg. Okay, a few ghosts apparently, just caught by, their, by themselves for some reason. Lurker here trying to harass wherever it can. Natural is wide open right now on the side of the Terran, but... Yeah. Not too confident in how this is going right here for Serral, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. I'm not seeing a good answer to this, like, you know, transition here from the Terran. Look at the amount of resources lost. It's going more and more in favor of Clem. There it is. The cost efficiency here from the Terran has been absurdly good. He's getting rid of a lot of those Zerg bases. Bottom right, however, has been, yeah, up and running for a while. Serral decides to go for a full-on counter-attack. Those Liberators are putting in a lot of work. He's trying to abduct them. Abduction does put them back into their air-to-air -air mode instead. So no anti-ground circle there available. But again, got a bunch of value, but nothing all too crazy. Now Clem is starting to get a lot of money in the bank as well. He's got eight, yeah, barracks here, two factories, two starports. A ton of production. Any lost units here can be replaced. He's gonna go into the plus one air weapons too. Okay. This expansion was previously mined by the Terran, and he'll be happy to see that indeed there is a base here that he can now snipe. Probably would have liked to see it even earlier than this, but Liberator is gonna harass over here. APMs are going up. Fungal growth, massive fungal growth over here, but EMPs do land on the uh, Vipers. So no para bombs, and that allows the Terran right now to get out of there with most of their units intact. Could have been a disaster if there was a parasitic bomb on the back of it, but not the case. Clem is playing with fire, though, and he knows it. But it turns out he can juggle. Could always go and work in the circus, you know? Juggle all of the different things that are on fire all at the same time. He's got the APM to do it at the very least. How do you engage these liberators? I'm not sure. I guess you can just try and push in. They're always gonna get some value in, though. Oh, yeah, the positioning right there is so lovely. It's gonna get even better here as well, as those upgrades finish up for the libs. Hatchery here in a little bit of trouble, but Serral seems to be holding on somewhat. He's trying to reinforce this, but look at the bank! Not that long ago, it was Serral who was leading this game. Only by a little bit. Now suddenly Clem has got way more money. 
This late game army is so tricky to deal with. It's a relatively recent addition to the Terran force. Rather than Ghost Mech, this is what a lot of Terrans have been favoring as of late, and it's it's so powerful. Not even really sure exactly what you do as the Zerk. I guess you need more spellcasters, right? Like Vipers are so critical here, but the EMPs once again connect with those Vipers. Those Ghosts are putting in so much work. Hatchery finally falls here. So although still has minerals to uh, to choose from, so he should be okay to continue mining for a little bit longer, but the problem is, yeah, indeed, he's running out of steam. It's Clem who obtains the victory in this best of five series. Three, two, one. If you enjoyed watching this video, maybe you'll enjoy watching my second channel as well. In case you're unfamiliar, there's another channel that I upload on every single day. That's youtube.com slash moreloco. Generally speaking on that channel, I upload games that I've completed on Twitch. So if you go to the playlist section on that channel, you can find all of the games that I've uploaded there. And well, every single one of them is from start to finish. So maybe you'll find something you like. Anyways, for now, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.